2020 was not a great year, so you'd be forgiven if you want to run off and spend 2021 entirely online, but with so many online games to choose from, which are worth your time and which are just as bad as the real world? Let's find out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, I'm Josh Strife Hayes, and today I'll be answering the question, should you play the Elder Scrolls Online in 2021? We'll be looking at several areas of the game and then deciding if it's worth your time. Before we begin, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel for more MMORPG stuff, then ringing the bell so you don't miss any future videos. A massive thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who make all my content possible. Right, let's do this. The Elder Scrolls Online is an action-adventure MMORPG available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Mac and PC through the Steam Store and Google Stadia. I'd go as far as to say it's probably one of the best console MMORPGs available right now. Unfortunately, these different platforms cannot cross-play with one another. Xbox players are confined to the Xbox servers, PS4 players are alone with other PS4 players and PC players are stuck with other PC players, although Stadia users can play with PC users as Stadia uses PC servers. Similar to Guild Wars 2, The Elder Scrolls Online works on a buy once, play forever with optional premium content model. The base game will set you back about 15 quid when not on sale and once you've bought it you can play indefinitely. There have been several expansions released for the game over the years, from smaller DLC packs like Scalebreaker and Wrathstone to massive additional continent add-ons like the Morrowind or Elsewhere expansions. The exact way additional content works and the sheer pace it's put out at makes it somewhat confusing to understand pricing, so here is a super simple explanation. Buying the base game will get you both the Elder Scrolls Online core game and the Morrowind expansion pack included for free. You can then buy each DLC or expansion pack separately from the game's crown store, that's the in-game premium shop. Or you can become an ESO Plus member, which costs £10 a month, includes some crowns, which are in-game premium currency, and gives you full access to all additional content. And you get a crafting bag in which you can store all your crafting materials. Basically, if you're going to play the game a lot, get the monthly membership. It's a huge amount of content for a relatively affordable price. The game is set in the Elder Scrolls universe, allowing you to adventure through the lands of Tamriel. Fans of the offline Elder Scrolls series from Arena, Battlespire, Daggerfall, Morrowind, Oblivion and Skyrim will feel right at home here, as most of the iconic locations from the game are available to go and visit. Within the game, you'll join one of three warring factions, the Daggerfall Covenant starting in the west, the Ebonheart Pact starting in the east, and the Aldmeri Dominion starting in the south, and all of the races surround the central land of Cyrodiil. Your regular day-to-day -day adventure will have you start in your faction's zone and adventure through following the story before ultimately travelling to the other two zones and experiencing that story as well. The central land of Cyrodiil is a constant battle for domination and control of the capital, it's basically a massive PvP zone. You've got nine playable races with a premium paid for tenth. Each faction gets three specific races, meaning if you want to play as a Breton, you have to be in the Daggerfall Covenant. If you want to play as a Wood Elf, you have to be in the Old Mary Dominion, and if you're a Nord, you have to be in the Ebonheart Pact. However, you can start your adventure and then immediately teleport to the starting zone of any other faction, so you're able to experience the land in the order you want. It's a bit of a shame the races are faction locked, but unless you're a hardcore endgame PvP player, it won't affect you that much. But if you buy the Explorer's Pack, you can play as an Imperial and join any faction. Or if you were a day one player of the game, you can play as anything in any faction. Each race does have varying passive racial bonuses, but they're so minute that unless you're a hardcore endgame player, you won't need to care about them, just choose something you like the look of. As for classes, you've got five standard ones, the Battle Hardened Dragon, Dragon Knight, the Spell Slinging Sorcerer, the Sneaky Beaky Nightblade, the Holier Than Thou Templar, and the Animal's Best Friend, the Warden. There's also the sixth premium class, the Dark and Spooky Necromancer. While your starting class may affect what you begin as, it does not really dictate your day-to-day -day playstyle, as there's no limits on which in-game guilds you can join or weapons you can wield. Want to be a sorcerer who runs around with a giant two-handed sword and proudly represents the Fighters Guild? You can do that. If you want to be a super sneaky thief that actually runs in shouting and screaming while firing arrows everywhere, you can do that too. Classes in Elder Scrolls Online are more of a suggestion and less of a hard limit, and this freeform system ties in perfectly with the general combat mechanics. Now, Elder Scrolls Online gets a lot of flack for its combat. It's been called many things, floaty, soft, weightless, bad, and while I can see where these arguments are coming from, it is one very good thing, and that's easy to customise. 
As you level up through your class, your faction, or any guilds you're a part of, you'll unlock new attacks, skills, and passive abilities, which you can drag onto your hotbar and then use. Then, as you use them, you can enhance them and even modify these abilities down various skill trees. So you level up your mage spell and you get the ability to summon a creature, then as you summon it more, you can enhance this to summon more creatures or a stronger creature, and then you can still use a bow while summoning a creature. Your spells can be modified to do more damage or have debuffs applied to the enemy. You can then arrange ultimately any combination of any activity and any ability onto your abilities bar, and what all this means is every single player can be vastly different from one another even if they're playing the same race and the same class. Your Nord Dragon Knight will be vastly different to my Nord Dragon Knight simply because we've set our abilities differently and followed different skill trees, and I personally love this level of freedom within combat. Now when the game first released back in those first few awkward days, this lack of limitation did mean that every player, regardless of class, just used a magical staff because the damage was way beyond anything else, but they've managed to balance all of the styles a lot better now. While the game still does get a lot of ESO combat bad memes thrown around, combat is only a small part of the entire experience, and it's the entire experience they've really focused on. The Elder Scrolls Online works through a mega server, a thing they made a big song and dance about when it was released. It basically means every Every player within a geographical region, that's Europe, North America or Asia, play on the same server, so you're always adventuring with hundreds and thousands of other people, however you may not always be able to see them. To reduce server load and in-game lag, not everyone gets loaded into everyone else's game, but if you're on someone's friends list or you've just fought alongside them, you'll likely always be able to see each other. Likely, yes, but guaranteed, no. However, you can still play solo, and with the central storyline, many times you're encouraged to. The Elder Scrolls Online does commit what I believe is a sin of the MMORPG genre, and that's making each player the chosen one, the super special person with a super special destiny of saving the world. And while seeing hundreds of the chosen one running around can be quite jarring, it does make the actual journey itself, the in-game structured adventure, extremely enjoyable through its absolutely stellar voice acting. The voice talent in this game is insanely good. Kate Beckinsale plays Queen A. Wren, Malcolm McDowell is is Molag Baal, and Bill Nye is High King Emmerich. Then you've got the likes of Michael Gambon as the Prophet, and freaking John Cleese as Sir Cadwell. They did not skimp on the voice acting budget for this game. The main adventure itself has you exploring the massive land and journeying from place to place, as any good wandering adventure should, solving small town disputes, and then eventually taking on the Daedric Anchors, massive chains that fall from the sky and latch into the land, then spawn Daedra. These events always attract quite a few players, and the rewards are often pretty damn good. It's events like these that really help cement the community together against a common enemy. When not fighting or exploring, you'll likely be crafting, and personally I do love the Elder Scrolls Online crafting system. When you find an item, say a specific type of sword, you can travel to a crafting station and deconstruct it. This will help you learn all the techniques involved in making it, from the design of the sword to any magical enhancements it had added to it. Then when you gather raw materials within the world, you can remake the same sword. When I say there are lots of designs in this game to craft, I mean it. You can choose the style you like the most and make yourself a full set of that armor or those weapons. Then you can sell those pieces to other players and they can deconstruct what you made so they themselves can learn the technique. Along with making basically everything yourself, you can find specialist crafting stations hidden within the world. And making something at these stations gives it special properties. Maybe wearing a full set of armor crafted at a special place gives you more defense or increases your mana recharge rate. Meaning you're not not just gathering and then going back to a town to craft, you are gathering and travelling to a unique location to make special armour that's useful for you. Which I think is absolutely brilliant because it makes the game feel like an actual adventure. The Elder Scrolls Online is not a quick game. You won't be able to get to end game within a day and you definitely won't unlock anywhere near all of the crafting recipes. It's not a game if you want to rush to the good bit and then fight through with your friends because most of it is good and rushing won't really get you anywhere. The actual adventure, the journey, the experience is what the Elder Scrolls is all about. You'll be unlocking dungeons from relatively low level and able to craft useful things from the very beginning of the game. You don't need to be at the end game to have an enjoyable experience. I was a day one founder of this game and I have several high level tunes, but I like going back restarting and playing from the start again because the early game experience is fun and because I don't feel pressured or rushed to get to the end game, I can take my time 
and really enjoy the experience. If you're worried about the current active player base, then don't be. MMO Population ranks ESO as the sixth biggest MMORPG and records it as having almost 1 million daily active players. Now granted, this number is spread across the PS4, Xbox and PC versions, but each version is still highly populated. There's an active subreddit, loads of YouTube content creators and always people streaming it on Twitch. If you're a console gamer, The Elder Scrolls Online is one of the deepest, most engaging MMORPGs available to you and for PC players the sheer amount of content from exploration to crafting to massive centralised PvP will keep you busy for months. As for the future of the game, the success of Skyrim and inevitable success of the Elder Scrolls franchise will keep this game relevant for years to come with endless amounts of additions. It's constantly getting updated and is likely to remain a member of the Big Five for the rest of its life. So should you play it in 2021? It's very important to understand that this game is not Skyrim Online. And personally, while the combat may have its issues and the everyone's special trope annoys me, I actually find the Elder Scrolls Online a really pleasant land to exist in. I like being able to swap weapons and armor to try new builds, I like being able to indulge my nostalgia and explore Morrowind again, and I like how simple the UI is and the gameplay mechanics are to understand. I like how deep the crafting system is, I like how the combat can be avoided if I choose to avoid it, and I like how stealth is a viable approach to most situations. Now if you're planning on sinking many many hours into this game, then go for ESO Plus to get the crafting bag and all the DLC, but if you're new to the game, buy the base version and see how you go. £15 for a good 100 hours of game is definitely worth it, so yes, it's absolutely worth giving it a go. It's fun from the very start and has more than enough players to mean you don't need to adventure alone if you don't want to. Combine this with years of refined gameplay and you'll find The Elder Scrolls Online is one of the most polished and enjoyable MMOs out there. Cheers for watching! Let me know in the comments below if you decide to try The Elder Scrolls Online, and drop a like on the vid, sub to the channel, and ring the bell for more MMO content. A huge thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who make all my content possible. You can join the Patreon from only £1 a month, come and chat to me live on Twitch, or join the Discord. Links are all below. Thank you for your time, and as always, have a great day.